Good morning. Thank you for joining us for the Progress on the Promise. A little over two years ago, our institutions joined together to embrace a new brand for all of us to share. It didn't require us to do anything new, but to be more intentional about our collaboration and our partnership. It is the Capital Area Promise, and together we've been able to accomplish so much more. My name is Brandon Smith. I am the Director of Community and Education Partnerships at LSU. I work along with a core team that we will introduce later uh, to elevate the promise and to carry its month-by-month -month operations. At this time, we will receive remarks from each of our leaders, beginning with LSU Interim President Thomas Gallagher. Good morning. I I'm very pleased to be with you this morning, and I want to thank my colleagues, Dr. Belton, Dr. Smith, and Mr. Smith, for their presence and commitment to this initiative. We'd also like to acknowledge several of our predecessors who were instrumental in launching this important event. Former LSU President F. King Alexander, former Chancellor Larissa littleton Stodd, and former Superintendent Warren Drake. And we owe special thanks to Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom for her leadership and support of the Capital Area Promise since its launch. We're excited to have a champion for the Promise at the highest level of our city parish leadership. This alone signals our mayor understands how education and economic development work together to shape a community. Thank you. We also appreciate the mayor and her team graciously hosting all of us, LSU, Southern, BRCC, and East Baton Rouge Parish for a two-part virtual town hall at the onset of the pandemic. Between April and June, these events allowed us to speak directly with more than 800 students, families, and community members regarding our plans to deliver education and critical services in the midst of the pandemic. Individually, our institutions contribute much to this community, and the Capital Area Promise allows us to communicate our collective impact. We embrace the important role we play in creating more pathways for all students in the region and holding ourselves accountable to measurable goals. Here are just a few points to consider about our collective impact in the past year. Together, we conferred more than 8,500 two- and four-year degrees to students. We awarded more than $107 million in institutionally controlled scholarships, making college more affordable for thousands of students. When federal and state grants are included, we have processed more than $394 million in financial aid. And that figure does not include federally subsidized loans. We reached more than 2,500 high school students in Baton Rouge and across the region through dual enrollment, which builds college readiness and reduces future tuition costs for families. We provided professional development and training to K through 12 faculty across the region and sent almost 200 graduates into the workforce with credentials to teach in our public schools. We created sequential college tours for middle school students, another first for Baton Rouge. Sixth graders visit LSU, seventh graders visit Southern University, and eighth graders visit BRCC. Now due to COVID-19, these campus visits didn't happen in 2020. We're reimagining them as virtual experiences in 2021, and hopefully by the end of the year, we will be back together in person. But we're also here to emphasize, while we have done a lot, there's more work to do. We are committed to deepening the partnership between K through 12 and post-secondary education. As the promise expands, we're also partnering with state and local agencies, including the Department of Education and LASFA. We're also welcoming several local business and nonprofits to co-brand their efforts in education and job creation under 
the Capital Area Promise umbrella. Specifically, at LSU, our commitment to the promise continues to grow. Last fall, we welcomed LSU's largest, most diverse, and most well-prepared class of first-year students ever, 6,650 students. Our total enrollment also reached a record high and was its most diverse ever. Even better, retention rates were at an all-time high, and our six-year graduation rate also hit an all-time high. That's more graduates, more people in the workforce. We're seeing outstanding growth right here in the capital area. Applications from students in East Baton Rouge Parish and the surrounding region are up 13% overall. And since the launch of the initiative, our enrollment of students from East Baton Rouge has also risen 13%. 19% increase in Ascension, 12% from Livingston, 41% from Point Capite, 40% from East Feliciana, Admitted students from West Baton Rouge Parish have risen 130% since last year, and we've also admitted 60 additional students from Iberville. Now, I know, I just threw a whole bunch of numbers at you, but the bottom line is the promise is achieving its goal of creating additional opportunities and pathways for students in our own backyard. Additionally, more than 1,000 students have enrolled at LSU from Baton Rouge Community College since the initiative kicked off. Last August, we launched eight new online programs, including two new undergraduate programs. Last September, we, along with Southern University and the Baton Rouge Area Chamber, extended our partnership with Handshake, a talent recruitment platform to help us retain graduates to the area. Prior to the pandemic, we had an admissions officer at Baton Rouge Community College at least twice a week to meet directly with students, and Chancellor, they'll be back when we can be safe in person again. Through a $1 million NSF grant, LSU faculty are working with four schools in East Baton Rouge Parish to train educators who teach computer and computer science courses to students beginning in the seventh grade. And through a $2.5 million grant, the LSU School of Social Work is partnering with the Louisiana Department of Education to meet the mental health needs of, of the public school system, including staff shortages. So again, we are incredibly committed to creating more opportunities by strengthening the pre-K to college pipeline and shifting the mindset about college to, I can do this, I will do this especially at a time when everyone is pushing to improve high school graduation rates across the capital area. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for your support. And now I would like to turn the mic over to my friend and colleague, Chancellor of Southern University, Ray Felton. Good morning and, and greetings uh, on behalf of Southern University and a and College. I am simply pleased to uh, be afforded this opportunity to uh, join with my colleagues Tom, Willie, uh, in celebrating the success of Capital uh, Area Promise. Uh, I, I feel compelled as well to acknowledge our Mayor, Mayor President Room, for her leadership. You know, I often say that uh, leadership matters, and certainly in terms of advancing this initiative, uh, it has uh, really laid a foundation for our campuses to collaborate even more and to uh, really embrace the notion of collaboration in whatever we do. And we're talking about education now, but that has expanded, as Tom may mention, uh, to uh, co uh, uh, partnerships with the Baton Rouge Area Foundation that uh, enable us to uh, uh, expose our students to internship opportunities and, and for career advancement uh, venues. And so, again, I just want to express my appreciation to our mayor for her leadership. Uh, it has and it continues to make a, a, a difference. Now, you can imagine uh, that uh, uh, the degree to which Southern University has been very excited about uh, participating uh, in this uh, a initiative. Uh, Tom said it best um, uh, when uh, the uh, uh, facilitators 
arrange for, uh, if you will, our campuses to host uh, middle school uh, students. Uh, in the case of uh, Southern University, uh, we had the uh, great benefit of hosting over 2,500 seventh graders over three days, and, and they were exposed to as many as 21 uh, presenters uh, over that time. Uh, and I had the occasion to be there on most of those days and to witness how wide-eyed they were uh, as they were entertained by the fabulous dancing dogs and the world-renowned human jukebox. You could imagine how impressionable uh, that, uh, that was uh, for them. Uh, and indeed, uh, particularly as a result uh, of this uh, initiative, uh, Southern had taken a, a renewed uh, interest in, in dual enrollment and really engaging with high schools uh, uh, such that we could uh, facilitate uh, the uh, advancement of a student's uh, uh, educational aspirations while still in high school. Uh, when this, uh, two, two years ago, uh, I don't mind sharing with you uh, that uh, our participation rate was less than 200. A year after that, uh, again, it's driven by the notion that we need to do more, uh, it increased by 119%. And last year, uh, we actually hosted over 600 students uh, through our dual enrollment uh, program, in part based on the mo momentum that we believe that uh, is ongoing uh, uh, as, as a result of participating in the capital uh, area promise. Uh, the university itself uh, has uh, grown significantly uh, over the last four years, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and that has primarily, we've seen the greatest level of growth as it relates to first-time freshmen. Individuals primarily uh, in the uh, Baton Rouge uh, area, uh, and, and to the extent that uh, it is imposing on us uh, to develop uh, uh, new facilities on, on campus, uh, and to again, you know, uh, uh, pro provide for students experiences that are enriching and that enable us to fulfill our mission uh, as an HBCU to be able to touch, to find students, and ensure that they are prepared uh, for the uh, global uh, marketplace. Uh, I don't want to share all the statistics uh, that uh, speaks to uh, Southern University's impact. Uh, as Tom uh, made reference, you know, the university uh, 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 has benefited, again, from a growth, increased enrollment. Uh, our, our retention rates have increased. Our graduation rates have increased on an annual basis. We provide students, when you consider federal and, 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 and state allocations, over $35 million uh, in, in scholarships. All, all uh, uh, advanced, uh, if you will, in, 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 in keeping with the recognition that we have a responsibility of shaping a new generation uh, of students. And clearly, the area of promise, if you will, uh, enable us to uh, leverage the resources of all of our institutions in such a way uh, that we are fulfilling uh, that, that mission. So again, it has been a genuine pleasure uh, working with uh, LSU and, and Baton Rouge Community College. I am so uh, proud of, of my colleague, uh, Willie, uh, who has hit the ground running uh, in his tournament role. And I, I was saying to, to myself, I was reading the agenda this morning, they said, uh, uh, interim President uh, Thomas Gallagher, and I said President uh, Thomas Gallagher, in light of his tremendous service uh, to LSU and to our community. So again, uh, allow me to say on behalf of, of Southern University how pleased we are to be partners uh, uh, in this, uh, in advancing the capital area uh, promise. And, and, and also allow me this, this great uh, uh, opportunity to again recognize uh, Chancellor Willie Smith 
uh, for the tremendous job he has done uh, over the last few years and the degree to which uh, he has already been impactful uh, in, in shaping uh, the experiences of students at Baton Rouge Community College. Uh, allow me to uh, again acknowledge uh, Chancellor Willie Smith. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. I'm Willie E. Smith. I serve as the Chancellor of Baton Rouge Community College. Somewhere I always find myself going behind Tom and Ray, and I don't know what to say. And certainly with Ray giving an accolade about the stuff that we're doing, but I should say that these two gentlemen, these two partners, have been amazing to work with. I do agree with Ray that the interim tag of Tom uh, should be President Tom Gallagher of LSU University. But I'm not going to dare get into politics of the university, right? <laughs> uh, this program was developed prior to my uh, uh, getting to Baton Rouge Community College. I think Dr. Larissa Style was the chancellor then, and a few others. I think uh, King Alexander were here. And so when I first witnessed it, this program, uh, I saw uh, uh, several buses pull up with hundreds of kids just running all over the place. So I called my sister and said, what's going on? I see all these kids just running on campus. Is that a fire or something? She told me no, that we're having a capital area promise. And so uh, my team really got me up to speed on the magnificent uh, thing that led by the uh, leadership of Mayor Broom on the capital area promise that I'm excited to be a part of. Uh, Tom and Ray mentioned to you the statistics of those students who are transferring from BRCC to LSU to Baton Rouge. But I want to talk about a story on that we don't have to hear the great partnership that we have between our three institutions. Uh, never in history have I seen the collaboration, uh, the respect, and the decorum that I'm having working with Tom and Ray. These gentlemen opened their doors to me, my staff, my faculty, but certainly our students to partake the experience on what it is to go to college and university and community college and technical colleges. Our country and our state is changing. Just a little earlier, I'm going to say a little humor with you, uh, Tom and I and Ray were talking about the COVID pandemic that we're facing. I think you all know why we're here. I see all the masses in the room. But Ray, uh, Tom shared an experience that when the polio vaccine was wrong, that you got those little bit of sugar cubes. I, I just went along and shook my head. I'm not that old remembering the sugar cubes, Tom. But I do remember the injection that we had to take for many viruses to protect us. And so uh, that was just interesting to share how much we have changed. And I say that because our students and our young people in elementary and high school are going to have to adapt. Our world is changing fast before us, and the university and the community college, the offering that we have, is certainly going to help these young people to adapt from a sugar cube molecule to an injection to beating the virus to having the will to say that I can do this. It's, it's magnificent when you see these young people come across your institution. This past year, uh, in 2019 and 20, we served about 1,900 students. Uh, I was so excited that they got to see firsthand over a 70, over 70 degree program that Baton Rouge Community College had to offer, but more importantly, got to witness some of our workforce training programs because we know not everybody's going to go to the, tech, to the university or the community college. They're probably going to go to work. And so we pride ourselves being a comprehensive community and technical college that we want to certainly send our students to those two gentlemen, to Southern and to LSU, but also making sure that we fill the gap on Louisiana workforce by supplying the skill that these students will need. And so over the duration of that, uh, about 500, or a little bit over 600 of those students enrolled in the community college in dual enrollment. And later on, I may get a share of talk about dual enrollment. We need to expand dual enrollment, and I think that's an initiative that we push with the State Department of what we call Fast Forward. Today now, high school students, every high school student in this state has an opportunity to leave high school, not just with a high school diploma, but with a social degree, okay, with a social degree. There's time in the day that's now that we can support our students and family now 
that they can actually receive a high school diploma and a social degree, transfer a two-year lesson to the university, but certainly get some workforce skills to be able to take care of themselves and family. And for once, Louisiana is going to be on the forefront of doing those things. And so I'm just proud to work with Tom and Ray and the work that we're doing, but I'm more excited to work with uh, Sharon Western Broom. This mayor has been uh, supportive of me, supportive of Baton Rouge Community College, not just in things that she talk about, but certainly in action and in resources. And so Baton Rouge, we're lucky to have another team of Sharon Western Broom who are leading this capital area, but also leading us men as we should do some things to support our young people and certainly the citizens of Baton Rouge in the state of Louisiana. So I'm not going to hold much time. It's my pleasure to introduce my friend and our mayor, Sharon Western Broom. Thank you uh, so much, Chancellor Smith, for all that you're doing at BRCC and for this partnership, and also to uh, President Belton and to uh, President Galligan. Thank you all so much for this partnership. Um, I am so thankful for these organizations. It's great to be in a capital city where you have such strong institutions as these three academic institutions. And I'm extremely grateful for the role that they play in our Capital Area Promise Initiative. In addition to our institutional pro uh, partners, I want to thank our media stations this morning for joining us and for uh, our annual progress on the Promise event. Thank you for taking out time. You know, as a former uh, adjunct instructor at both Southern University and LSU, I have seen how our institutions can change the lives of students within the capital region. And now, as Mayor President, I recognize the importance of youth development and education. Education acts as the foundation for thriving and for having a prosperous life both for our, our youth and our community at whole. This is why my administration works hand in hand with our East Baton Rouge Parish School System, Baton Rouge Community College, LSU, and Southern University to connect our youth to the resources around them. The Capital Area Promise is an investment in our youth and an investment in our future. By investing in our youth, we're laying the foundation for a community of peace, prosperity, and progress. You see, this community collaboration is critical for the future of our parish, not only for education, but for economic and workforce development. There are limitless opportunities here in the Capital Region, and it is incumbent upon us to ensure that youth have both the access and the opportunity that they need to thrive. We know that exposure leads to inspiration, and we want to continue to inspire our youth and supply them with the skills and the support that they need to be successful in life. And of course, I hope this will encourage our youth to stay in Baton Rouge and build our local economy and community landscape. Of course, as the Mayor President, I am a little biased. But I am proud of the role the Mayor's office has played in keeping the promise so far. In 2019, we had 51 worksite partners, up from 21 in 2018. In that same year, the number of youth who took part in the campus and worksite visits more than doubled to four, 507 participants. Now, the pandemic forced us to change the way we did things in 2020. And I know that even as 2021 is in full effect, our higher education institutions continue to be forced to make some tough decisions and adapt quickly in the midst of a lot of uncertainty. Despite the adversities we have faced in the last year, I'm glad to say 
that our collective promise to the Baton Rouge community will remain and the best is indeed yet to come. Youth are critical to moving Baton Rouge forward and we owe it to them to provide opportunities for enrichment. I truly believe the campus and work site visits are making an impact in these children's and young adults' lives and preparing them for today's workforce. That's why I piloted the Campus Exposure 225 program a year ago, where we brought 50 students from Brookstown Middle School to all three of our college and university campuses, exposing them to educational leaders and engaging them in roundtable discussions about the skills they need to become leaders in our community. In East Baton Rouge Parish, we are being aggressive when it comes to economic development, whether it's our investment in infrastructure like the $1 billion movie VR project or increasing access to health care in our disinvested communities, such as the redevelopment of the Howell Place Medical Complex in North Baton Rouge. We are creating an environment ripe with opportunity. So we want to make sure that our students have the skills that they need to sit at the table in this new economy. With that being said, I commend all of you once again for your role in keeping the promise. And I look forward to us meeting again as we work together to further education and career development in the capital region. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Broom, and to all of our leaders. At this time, I want to acknowledge the core team. This is the team of individuals who work on a regular basis as representatives of all of the Promise Partners to make sure that we're doing all that we can uh, together as we, as we remain committed to our individual goals and, and benchmarks. From Southern University, it is Heather Freeman, Executive Director of Admissions and Recruitment, who is joining us virtually. Thank you so much, Heather, for your work. From BRCC, Phil Smith, Vice Chancellor for Institutional Advancement, who represents BRCC on the core team. Thank you, Phil. Dr. Pamela Rivard jones from the Mayor's Office, an Assistant Chief Administrative Officer. She's representing the Mayor's Office on that core team. And last but not least, Ben Nikes, who's Associate Superintendent with the East Baton Rouge Parish School System, who I will invite to give brief remarks on behalf of the Superintendent and the K-12 School District at this time, and then we will return or transition to our questions. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today, and uh, especially in light of all the support from our partners. One of the things that you know I'm really proud of is that everything, all the work that we do and all the work they do to help us goes uh, really straight to our students and to their families and providing opportunities uh, for the future. So again, I'm, I'm very proud of that work and, and so glad to be a part of a team that really is all about working together. Uh, as soon as we started the core team and all of our partners joined in and the leaders from each institution, one of the things that stood out to me first is that everybody was focused on how do we help all students, not just for my organization or your organization, but for all students. So again, it's such a great collaboration. Um, before I, you know, I go into further remarks, I do also want to thank all of our principals and our teachers and support staff um, you know, when COVID started and we closed schools in March, it's been a long road to get to where we are today. Um, you know, we then, as we closed out the school year, one of the things I do want to thank all of our partners here uh, is that they continue to let us close out those dual enrollment courses virtually. They worked with us to make sure students continued to move forward through post-secondary pathways um, and also make sure we closed, you know, our graduates out and they, they had admission to college and could continue on their uh, pathway uh, to school. So again, 
that was a long road. And then as we began this semester in the last year, as we, you know, entered back into school uh, physically, uh, we still have about a third of our students who have opted virtually to stay in those virtual environments. But we also have two-thirds of students who are coming to school every day. And it's really through the hard work and dedication of all of those staff members that I spoke about to make sure we have a safe environment where students can still prosper. Um, we also want to thank our partners for continuing to help us with all of our dual enrollment and uh, post-secondary uh, activities as well. Uh, over the past five years, our goal really has been to not only increase um, access to high quality uh, seats and high quality programming, but to do it at all schools. So not only do we have magnet programs, but we wanted to expand that to every single student at every single school. And so throughout the last five years, we've added that. And at, for example, our high schools, we have programming that encompasses you know, all areas ranging from creative arts and science programming to aquaponics to uh, process technology, um, humanities amped. We have so many different opportunities for students that really they can find a niche or something that they're interested in everywhere. Um, in addition to that, one of our biggest goals has been expanding uh, through this partnership um, access to college uh, coursework or college credit. And so since 2014, we've increased our dual, enroll, our, our dual enrollment offerings from about 400 seats to now over 1,300 seats. So again, greatly increasing the number of dual enrollment opportunities students can earn before they leave high school. The other area that we've been very much uh, pressing forward in is advanced placement coursework. And this offers opportunities for students to, uh, uh, you know, earn credit or, or opportunities to not have to take courses in college. And we've increased that since 2014 from 2,000 seats to over 8,000. So again, this is an incremental increase at all of our schools, and we're seeing a lot of great success there. Um, one of the things that we're really proud of is that at no point do parents have to pay for these costs. Uh, we pay for all the dual enrollment seats. We also offer opportunities through waivers and also other uh, title programming money and grant programs to pay for uh, our advanced placement courses. So again, we want parents to be able to do this without any type of financial hardship. Other things that I'm really proud of is our partnerships with dual enrollment is kind of to explain how each of the institutions really support us. On one hand, we have uh, Baton Rouge Community College who we're working with, as Dr. Uh, Smith said, through the early uh, Fast Forward program and also our early college academy that offers students an opportunity to get an associate's degree before they even leave high school. So we're focused on some amazing work there. At LSU, we have our STEM pathways where students have opportunities to earn credits in biomedical, pre-engineering, computer science, and digital media. Um, and then we have Southern University, as Dr. Belton stated. We now offer more of our core classes and dual enrollment through Southern than any other university. So again, it's such a great partnership, and all of our uh, organizations are really helping us move forward. The other area that we're really proud of is our EBR Career and Technical Center. And at this center, students who are not going to go for a four-year university have an opportunity to get an associate's degree or other type of credentialing in areas such as computer science and HVAC, electrical, manufacturing trades, uh, medical uh, trades as well. So again, we're trying to offer high quality seats to any student and every student that wants it. And then finally, one of the other things that was mentioned uh, is that we also are in a BR Bytes grant um, uh, space right now where we're working with LSU and we have a computer science pathway that ranges from seventh grade all the way to 11th. And students take courses and earn high school credits and credentials through that. And one of the wonderful things about that is not only are we giving students access to computer science education and computational thinking, but those credits can count for a variety of pathways moving forward, not just one. And so again, it's getting students, uh, you know, much more access to understanding that, you know, the careers of the future and understanding that even things that today don't focus on computer science or on other type of thinking will in the future. So again, we want to thank all of our partners and especially um, all of our teachers and the schools who have done really the yeoman's work to lay all the foundations for the access that students have now and in the future as well. So thank you.
Thank you, Ben. In addition to the core team members that we discussed, we would also like to acknowledge the work and the support of the Louisiana Department of Education and the Louisiana Office for Student Financial Assistance, or the LOSPA Office, uh, because they have helped us tremendously in our efforts uh, to align all of our programs and initiatives under the promise, and they've also been critically important as we collect data to understand our year-over-year -year progress. At this time, we do have some questions that have been submitted prior to our uh, press conference for our partners that our leaders can take at this time. And local media, you are also invited to ask a few questions. We want to try to be as uh, on schedule as possible, uh, so let's uh, be considerate of our time. But we do want to open it up for questions. There is a microphone that has been provided to you in the rear. Um, throughout the coronavirus pandemic, um, we were all, I believe, pushed to be innovative and creative. And uh, so with that, we hosted educational town hall meetings virtually. And I was very excited to see the response that we got from people. We got emails from parents who said, thank you so much. This has been so informative. And I believe in this process, uh, we touched over 800 students at all of our um, institutions. And so going virtually during the pandemic is something that we did, hosting those education town hall meetings. So our next question has come in, and it is for Mr. Benjamin Case from the EDR School System. In your question, how has the school district and post-secondary partners supported student learning and college credit opportunities during the COVID-19 pandemic period? Great, thank you. Um, you know, again, as we kind of began to look at when, when the uh, you know, school closures took place in March, we looked at this year and started thinking, how do we make really uh, our schedules better for students, for teachers moving forward? And so, for example, at our high school levels, we moved to what's called a four by four block where students only take four classes per semester instead of eight so that they could concentrate on work and kind of collapse down the amount of responsibility they had at one time because we knew we, we might be virtual or a hybrid at any point. And so really it was important that all of our college partners worked with us on that schedule. It's a very different schedule. Instead of taking a course for a whole year, it was collapsed to a semester. And so all of our partners did that. We knew we were going into the unknown. We weren't sure quite how all of that was going to work. But one of the things I'm proud to say is actually we almost doubled the amount of dual enrollment courses we could offer by doing that schedule. And really they followed through with us on it. And the other thing I kind of mentioned earlier was, you know, when we had to close in March without skipping a beat, all of the universities immediately flexed to virtual. Our students continued to get quality instruction from their instructors. And we were able to close out the semester, uh, you know, in a very organized and appropriate way. So again, they worked with us from the beginning. And as we've kind of gone through this, you know, some students are hybrid, you know, or where they are virtual. Some students are in face-to-face. -face. They've worked with us no matter what. So thank you. Thank you, Ben. Our next question is a dual question. It's for both institutions. I'd ask President Belton to come up first, followed by Mentor President Gallagher. So the question President Belton, beyond the capital area promise, how can Southern University work together with LSU to bridge the racial divide in the city of Baton Rouge? Yeah, I, I, well, uh, let me say that we are already starting that process. Uh, both uh, LSU and Southern uh, have uh, committed, uh, if you will, and I think just this week there was a form 
uh, that was comprised of representatives from both of our institutions to kind of speak about those things that are unspeakable. You know, and so uh, in, in many ways, uh, I think we recognize that, uh, that these discussions have to take place uh, for, for the betterment uh, of, of Baton Rouge, for the state of Louisiana nationally. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, we have a responsibility to facilitate those type of, of conversations. And so it's not what we're going to be doing, it's what we're doing now and what we are committed to, to do uh, going forth is, is facilitating discussions uh, such that we have a, 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 a diverse perspective about, you know, the world to which we live in and, 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 and where opportunities lie uh, for us to uh, become uh, even greater stakeholders in advancing the interests of this state. Thank you so much. The same question will be posed to LSU. I will reread the question for you again. Interim President Galligan, beyond the capital area promise, how can LSU work together to bridge the racial divide in the city of Baton Rouge between your institutions? I guess I would say that, that we, we work together already, as Ray said, and uh, both he and I are, are anxious to deepen the partnership. And we're not competitors, we're partners in this. Um, so, so I think, as Ray said, we have to be able to have difficult conversations. But we have to, have to realize that until we come together and have those conversations, uh, until we work together, until we have more vibrant student interchanges than we have right now, um, that's not going to happen. So our actions are going to speak a whole lot louder than our words are. Um, we actually partnered on a, a research project involving reopening with COVID. It ended up not getting funded, but we worked together on that. Um, we've also got uh, various, we worked together various of our colleges. Manship has worked with, with Southern on programming. The Law Center has worked with Southern on programming. So, so, so I think I started at LSU in 1986. I, I left in 1998 and I came back in 2016. And the relationships between LSU and Southern in that time frame are so much different than they were before. Um, we, are, we are in this together. We're, we're going to work together. We've talked about other collaborative projects and we're, we're excited to do so. So thank, thank you for the question and stay tuned for more. Thank, uh, thank you for that uh, question. And I said, I said earlier when I gave my remarks about a challenge from this state to make sure that every high school student, those who want to, and certainly we should challenge all our young people and families, should leave with not just dual enrollment credit, but a high school, uh, but excuse me, but a college degree. And so the capital area problem must provide eighth graders, when we're serving eighth graders at BRCC, to look at all of our programs that transfer to my partners, to Tom and Ray, to the Fourier University, but also those who are going to work and in the workforce. Uh, our workforce program students, average salary is about $53,000, right? And so when, we, when you think about it, when they come to our institutions, and that's requested, they come in and take some dual enrollment cr credit, but not necessarily uh, finishing. Why not that we now allow them through what we call early college academy, I think, been in our seats for talking about this, get an opportunity to just not get credit but to complete a degree. So when they get to Southern University or LS University, they only got two years versus four years. I think that's a kitchen talk table between families and parents, parents and students in our community. Because now we're taking the burden on students to take massive debt out to go to our institutions.
because they cannot afford it. But by way of passing, that is by doing the Early College Academy. Additionally, for those students who don't want to go to university, have a gateway to go directly to work and feel the work for demand of the state of Louisiana in certain Baton Rouge. And so the Early College Academy model is an economic issue, is a kitchen table issue, and it's a society issue that we must challenge our youth to be better, not just taking credit, but to complete with a college degree. I'm excited, the work that we're doing at BRCC and leading some of the effort. Certainly we would like to have 100% particip participation in this type of program, but I guarantee you, if we go through this route, students are going to be better prepared to enter Tom and Ray Institution, but also fulfill the needs of our workforce. And so this initiative is highly competitive where these students embark on this pro program or this, or this opportunity, but certainly they're a great success. Imagine that now that in our state economy, we could talk about 18 and 19 year, 19 year old adding back to our state coffers and certainly paying taxes and going back to work. Imagine now that the, the, the graduation retention rate of our four year university increases by students being better prepared. And so these feel several vacuum and certainly um, I'm, I'm excited about this model. I'm excited about our role in, in, into this, but I challenge everyone to look into this model and certainly support our state Department of Education, our high schools, and our community, to the car and our university to make this happen. Thank you, Chancellor Smith. We have a final question for Mayor Broom, and then all of the um, institutions will have a chance for the final question, which will be posed to everyone. Mayor Broom. So the question, Mayor Broom, is how does the Commission on Racial Equity and Inclusion examine our schools through the lens of equity as it relates to disparities in education? That's a pretty deep question there. Uh, let me just start by saying uh, that the Corey Commission, Commission on Racial Equity and Inclusion, uh, was a commission that I appointed, made up of citizens throughout our city and parish, diverse uh, groups of individuals. Uh, many you may know, some you may not know, but they spent a lot of time looking at the different issues that impact our city and parish, and education undoubtedly was one of those issues. And looking at it against the backdrop of racial equity and inclusion, and as uh, you asked in your question, uh, disparities. And so um, their, part of their report, which I encourage everyone to read online, the Corey Report, don't ask any, don't look for someone to tell you what's in it or read about, uh, read it about it through a news clipping, read the report. And in the report, it talks about many of the disparities that exist with early childhood education because all of these educators here, I believe, will agree that the key to putting a student on the trajectory of success is a focus on early childhood education. And so making sure that we develop uh, joint partnerships that can help infuse our capacity for early childhood development here in our city and parish making sure that we have partnerships that can help empower our existing programs, uh, like our Cradle to K initiative that we have within uh, the mayor's office, but definitely uh, uniting around a focus with partnerships from stakeholders in our community to close the gap of disparity that exists around early childhood development. So the final question is actually posed to all institutions. I'll ask if uh, President Belton would like to address it first, followed by um, Chancellor Smith, then Interim President Galligan, BR, oh, pardon me, UBR Parish School Systems, and then finally my mayor group. The question is, why is it so important for your institution or administration to participate in the capital area promise? What does it mean to you? Well, uh, as I pointed out, I think it, uh, 
to really establish a foundation for greater collaboration uh, amongst our institutions. Um, uh, Tom, um, I, I think, made a, it made a pointed uh, observation in, in speaking of the relationship between Southern University uh, and, and, and LSU. Uh, I've been around a while as well, and I have never known uh, uh, a time when our, our relationship is more substantive. Uh, there was a time, uh, as I recall, that, you know, LSU did not have a lot of fans on, on the other side of the track, to include myself. Uh, but now I'm, I'm an avid fan of uh, LSU. And it's, and it's for a reason. Uh, it's in keeping with uh, the impact uh, that LSU have on, this, on, on all of our communities. I think uh, uh, as, a, as institutions of higher education, uh, we literally have a greater responsibility of establishing for the stakeholders of this state you know, a platform for them to be successful. Uh, and um, unfortunately, uh, I, I think uh, unless we do a better job, uh, we are not going to be able to respond to the workforce needs in 2030, uh, nor would we be providing for uh, citizens to be competitive in this global uh, workforce. And so we have to look beyond uh, where we were and find ways, if you will, to, to come together, work together in a collaborative way in advancing the mission of this state. And I think the uh, area, uh, the capital area promise, it really uh, provided for us, I, I think, some uh, uh, adrenaline, uh, some motivation, uh, maybe, uh, 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 I want to say a, a, a kick or something like that, but I won't elaborate on that. But it, it really, I think, provided for us yet another opportunity to explore ways to uh, collaborate uh, even more so uh, in advancing uh, the, the, the interests of, of the state. Am I repeating the question for me, Pamela? I got a little distracted. I was chatting with the mayor. I apologize. Yes, sir. So the question is, why was it so important for BRU to have uh, a capital area promise? I think Ray did a good job of uh, talking about uh, participation. I think we each would share that in our own individual cultures, that silos. Uh, and I'm going to talk about BRCC in a second. But certainly the silos have been breaking up among these three institutions. The great partnership and collaboration that all of us have. I call on Ray, he's there. We're working on an initiative right now. Same with Tom. And so we're reflecting on what our society should be, on working collaborative, respectfully and together. But certainly as leading institutions, large institutions that's supporting our workforce of tomorrow and to better serve our citizens. BRCC, I think, values and participating in this is on twofold, I think. One is just uh, to show young people the opportunity that they have to receive a great education and training at a two-year institution, but certainly preparing them to go to my partners here. The other one is for those students who don't see themselves inclined enough to want to go to four years, not right off, but certainly get a skill in one of our high-demand programs where they can get a good job. And so when we walk eighth graders through, we show them a different other program, we talk to them, we counsel them, and we ask what they want to do. In many cases, many want to transfer to the university, uh, certainly LSU and Southern, and in many cases, some want to go to work. And so our value is making sure that we not only share our mission, but what our partner does. But the number one goal, I think, of the capital area promise is to make sure, and I think the mayor attests to it, that we are providing equity and opportunity for all of our citizens to be educated, no matter where they want to go. And certainly partner with the mayor's office and partner with my uh, four-year counterparts we want to make sure that every Louisiana citizen 
has opportunity, and we reach our hands out and we extend our gratitude to make sure that we're going to support them. And so I take pride in saying BRCC is just excited to be a part of this promise, but certainly we want to be partnering with our partners here and continue to provide that mission of making sure we want to be inclusive, we want to be diverse, we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to, to have a dream of you have a challenge that you can't get directly to the four year, and you can come to us. But certainly those students who are doing that work their tails off, and we just so excited. And I can keep here and talking about this, and so the partnership is great. And so it's just an opportunity for us to display as leaders why they should invest in us, and our state should invest in us, and why they should go to one of our institutions. So thank you. Um, I'm going to say amen. Um, the, the most important thing is about it is it's a vis visible manifestation of how we can work together to make lives better for uh, students in Baton Rouge. And, and so, so I'm not going to repeat, but I'm going to personalize it and then maybe speak symbolically. Um, my father was a first generation college student. Uh, my mother didn't get to go to college because of the depression. Because of my father going to college, there was never a question about me going to college. Whether it was going to be a two-year college or a four-year college, I was going to college. So, so he going to college pushed the horizon for, for my generation and for the generation of, of my children. So it, so it was hereditary. It came down. And when I think of those sixth graders and those seventh graders and those eighth graders, Brandon tells me that many of them haven't been on a college campus until they come to LSU or until they come to Southern or until they come to, to BRCC. Um, so for them, what the Capital Area Promise does is it shows them the place. It makes concrete what they can achieve and what they can do so they can see it. So, so to me, it's a little bit like having been the child of a first generation college student, that was the, that was the, I'm going. They see it, they can go. We can work with them to, to go, to achieve, and to succeed. So, so I think the partnership and the success of those students are the two most important things to me personally about being part of the promise. I think probably the most important part of, or the piece uh, related to the promise for us is one, you know, we have a ton of support from the mayor and her team. And also the fact that, you know, as a district, we're truly blessed. We have three great uh, institutions that support post-secondary opportunities. And so, again, it's, it's really a no-brainer that we work together. Um, and one of the things that's important for us and that, that really is a capstone moving into post-secondary is that students have to graduate. Um, and so graduation rates and those opportunities are super important. But graduation is not a 12th grade issue. It's a K-12 issue, a pre-K or early childhood issue too. Um, and so again, pushing opportunities down to even the middle school level where students see the universities, they have access and connect and see what that horizon is. Or they can also begin programming and start classes as early as 6th and 7th grade. Have dual enrollment opportunities in ninth grade. You know, those opportunities are what give students that idea, that spark, that I can find something that I like and I think I can see a future in it. And for us, that's critical with graduation rates. And one of our biggest at-risk factors really in the district is, is students attending school. Uh, we need students in school. And with the programming and things that we have access to, we are seeing students get more excited about those opportunities. So again, uh, I couldn't ask for a better group to work with. The core team is amazing, the leaders are amazing, and it also breaks down silos. All it takes is a phone call, we're all on the same page, and the organizations within you know, all of our groups know that. So uh, one call can solve a problem now. We're, you know, there's no more bureaucracy, we work together. So again, we're very proud to be a part of it, and, and thank everyone for participating.
to thank all of our participants today. And you can see I have a big smile on my face because I will tell you, uh, when my team initially started talking about the capital area promise, I had a little vision of what it could mean. But since we've started, and even in a short period of time, it has, I believe, gone beyond my expectations. And it really has shown the power of collaboration. Um, we've heard that consistently from everyone, you know, breaking down silos, collaborating. And our community wants that to happen. When we're in conversations and meetings, that always comes up. You know, we work in silos. We need to stop working in silos. Well, this is a perfect example of what collaboration, working together, can do to empower our students here in this community. And I couldn't be uh, more excited as the mayor president to be a part of this. The Capital Area Promise in closing says to me, and I hope says to our students, a promise is a commitment. When you make a promise, you make a commitment. And this community has committed to our students that we want to see them have success. We want to put them on the path of success. We want to help them fulfill their boldest dreams that, we, that they may have. And we want to show them the possibilities that it doesn't matter what your zip code is, what your family's income may be, that here in Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish, we want to help you have a bright future. So I'm so excited about what has happened uh, with the Capital Area Promise and what will happen because indeed the best, as I said earlier, is yet to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Randy? Please, please join me in thanking our leaders um, for their remarks today. We, we are at time, but that goes to show you there's a lot of interest in the Capital Area Promise. But for all of the questions that, we, that were submitted, if we were unable to get to them, we will follow up with you as best as possible to make sure that those are answered. We also know that local media is here, and we invite you to uh, interface with uh, any of the leaders. We have uh, made the terrace available in case we need extra space for outside social distancing, if you would like to get any interviews or cutaways with any of our leaders. Again, I want to thank the core team uh, for all of their help. I invite all of the local media and any community residents to Zoom in. Uh, the Zoom information will be provided for you on all of our accounts at 1 p.m. The, the core team will formally present the report so that you know that we're not just talking uh, happy talk, but we've got good numbers, we have metrics, and we are holding ourselves accountable to, uh, as institutions and also to the public to let you know the 10 goals of the Capital Area Promise, we are literally watching our progress year over year to make sure that we're making progress. I'd also like to invite you to two other virtual sessions today at 4 p.m. The Capital Area Promise is hosting a discussion for teachers. We will have presenters from some of our institutions. For teachers across the nine parish region, it's also via Zoom. And at 6 p.m., we will have a virtual session for students and parents to ask a lot of questions about completing the FAFSA, dual enrollment, how to, how to prepare for college. So again, the, the progress on the promise is growing even as an event as we figure out how to bring in new people. Please help me thank EBR Libraries for hosting us, for being such gracious hosts. We'd also like to thank Media Support, thank you, brought to us by the mayor's office and her team and all that they did to make sure that we were technologically savvy. We want to thank our captionists. Uh, thank our, uh, our sign interpreter, and we want to thank, above all, the people who work really hard behind the scenes to make us look good, support staff from the mayor's office, and graduate assistants from the LSU Office of Community University Partnerships. We thank you so much for joining us. We will be in touch. We hope to see you virtually at our other sessions. Again, media, you're welcome to meet with our leaders, but especially if you have spe specific questions about the 2019-2020 
progress on the promise report we as a core team will make ourselves available to you at a 1 p.m. session for specific questions about the report thank you for joining us